Hello and welcome to today's episode of Deconstructing CDK Patterns and today we are going to be discussing the predictive lambda pattern. This is using functionality that was only released this week in Andy Jassy's keynote at reInvent and that is of course being able to run a docker container on lambda. So if you want the code you can jump in with mpx cdkp init the dash predictive dash lambda. Um, otherwise just let's walk through the theory and then afterwards we'll jump into the code. So on the 1st of December, Andy Jassy announced Lambda container support as part of his reInvent keynote. And you can see the image on the left is the big excitement. But what does that really mean? And how is this different from Fargate, which was previously considered the serverless container option? It's different because first of all, the Lambda runtime is still different to the Fargate runtime in that this is not a place to run a Docker image to have multiple concurrent threads running and persisting state like a traditional say Spring Boot application. This is the Lambda. It takes one request, it processes that one request, it returns it. If a second request comes in, it will spin up a second container. So you are still in the serverless flow. This is about pieces of functionality that traditionally did not fit in the Lambda runtime, but makes sense to run that way. So AWS have provided these base images in Python, Node, Java, .NET, Go, and Ruby, but they've also stated you can create your own from the custom runtimes, and it can be up to 10 gigabytes in size now, which is the big difference. The reason why I'm making the case for machine learning on Lambda and containers is because machine learning on Lambda was hard before this point, Everything to do with machine learning involves data and everything involving data is large. Unfortunately, it was possible, but really hard to do machine learning on Lambda before this point. And the other thing to do with that is that using a container means that you can train the model in the runtime environment. And what I mean by that is Python and the pickle command, which is what you use to export a model, has issues with if the place that you actually run the model is different to the place that you train it, it can throw errors. And that's just because it pretty much just takes a snapshot of the Python execution. And if something's different, it fails. So with this, what you can do is you can use the Lambda Python image as your training image, then export the model so that you don't have all of the training data and all the extra stuff that you only needed to train and then import that into the Lambda runtime and it should still work. So you're keeping consistency and you're able to train in an automated fashion. And then the third point is this means traditionally, if you wanted to host a machine learning model, you would put it in a Docker container somewhere and you could save costs by having that on some kind of schedule. But let's just say you're running that 24 seven. And these models are typically quite large. Uh, we had ones with over 32 gigabyte of RAM required to run them. So they're not cheap, but going this way means that if your model is only making predictions at a certain time of the day or a certain day of the month, or even in an asynchronous flow, you're only paying per prediction or per inference, which means that it, cha it fundamentally changes the way you can think about building models. You could have eight or nine of them deployed and you're not costing thousands per month to host it. it. You could be costing less than a cent. So the model we're going to use today is built with uh, scikit-learn. It's a K neighbors classifier model. And if you want to know more, you can jump into that URL on the scikit-learn website. I don't really want to turn this into a machine learning video because we could spend hours on the theory and the model used here is just for demonstration purposes. Don't be thinking this is a beautiful model. What, what I've done is I've taken some open source data that I got from Kaggle and that is every Chipotle location in America and it's latitude and longitude. The left shows them all plotted on a map. You should hopefully be able to roughly see the outline of America there and the K nearest neighbor model means you pass it in a latitude and longitude and it will find the nearest point on this map essentially. But again, I haven't actually tested the accuracy of this because it doesn't matter. We're just trying to prove that you can deploy a model and it can make predictions. 
So there's three processes that we're going to walk through in this pattern. The first one is the training of the model. And if you just want to deploy a Docker container to Lambda, you can skip this step because I've bundled the pre-trained model in the repo. But if you're interested in how it works, I've included all of this so you can actually run the script and train it yourself. The second step is the Lambda container setup and how we tell Lambda what code to run whenever you invoke it. And then the third step is our standard CDK infrastructure deploy. So model training, how it works is we use the Lambda Python container image. We then copy in our training data and a file called training.py into that container. We use the pip install to install our dependencies and then we run training.py which creates a file which is our trained model and then what we do is we export that trained model out of the container. So from that point the container is done. We spun it up to train it and it's gone. Then in our Lambda container setup we use the same Lambda Python container image but this time we copy in app.py which is going to have our runtime logic and the trained model and then install the same dependencies. From that point, we just have to tell Lambda what is our Lambda handler to hit. So that's why we have app.lambda handler set in the Docker file. The CDK infrastructure deploy is fairly simple and short. It uploads the Lambda container to ECR, which I believe is the only container registry supported right now. And then we tell Lambda to use that container and integrate it with API Gateway. Finally, it deploys all those changes via CloudFormation. If you're curious what the runtime performance of this looks like, well, I have noticed the first cold start takes several seconds, but then afterwards it's five milliseconds, pretty much flat, well, 4.48. <laughs> the thing about this is machine learning models do take a few seconds to unpickle, even in a deployed constant container environment. So this is something that will need to be worked through in terms of, it doesn't matter if you're hitting it from an asynchronous flow, but if you did want to deploy a model in this fashion to stand up behind a web API for people to hit in real time, you'd need to look at, can you optimize your model to start quicker? Otherwise this cold start could be quite daunting for your users. Okay, so now that hopefully you understand what we're going to deploy, let's actually go through and walk through the code. So if you want to follow along at home, all you have to do is for TypeScript, do mpx cdkp init the dash predictive dash lambda. For Python, it's the same thing, only dash dash lang equals Python on the end. Or if you just want to follow along in the browser, you can go to github.com slash cdk dash patterns slash serverless. Okay, now that uh, we've walked through the theory, let's actually walk through some of the code and we'll do it in the three stages that I mentioned in the theory part. So first step, we need to get the code base and I'm just gonna use the cdkp command for mpx cdkp init the dash predictive dash lambda. And that's going off and cloning the code base just for this one pattern, which means it don't need to take all of cdk patterns down and then it installs the dependencies for me so that I can just do a deploy. But since it has already got the code base down, the three stages that I mentioned were we need to train the model, then we set up our Lambda container, and then we deploy it with CDK. So the first step in terms of training the model, it all takes place inside this model folder. And before we jump into that, actually I'm gonna kick off the deploy because it takes a few seconds. Um, so but if you're trying to copy this, make sure that you have Docker installed and running, otherwise this step will fail. Um, so in terms of model training, it all takes place inside the model folder. And inside here, you can see we have our training Docker file, and this is what kicks everything off for the training phase. From public ecr.aws slash lambda slash python 36 is the public Lambda Python image that the AWS team have now provided. So we're taking that image. We want to copy in training slash training dot pi requirements dot text and training slash chipotle stores dot csv. So we're copying in our raw data, the requirements that are needed, our dependencies for Python, and then a training script. We're installing those dependencies and then we're running the training script and that's it. 
requirements.txt is pretty simple. We need sklearn, pandas, and joblib. And if we go into our training folder and we look at training.py, this is where all of the data science happens and yours could look completely different to this. But this is your repeatable process to take raw data and output a trained model. So you can see we pull in sklearn.neighbors and the process goes, we load our Chipotle data from CSV. We then strip it down to just have three columns, which are address, latitude and longitude. We tell it to drop the duplicates to make sure that all our data is unique. Then we split our data up into a training set and a test set randomly so that we could evaluate the quality. Now, I mentioned in the theory part, I didn't actually use the test set to check the quality of this model, but that is because I'm only proving that you can deploy a model to Lambda this way. This actual model is actually probably really rubbish. That's, it doesn't matter for this. So then what we need to do is we have to split the data up from the labels and that the label is what you're predicting. So you want to separate the data you're using to make predictions from what the prediction itself is. And in this case, what I want us to predict is the address of the Chipotle location and latitude and longitude are what's being used to train it. Then we just use K neighbors classifier telling it uh, N neighbors is two. You can tweak this to your heart's content. We want to use a weight of distance and just have the algorithm on auto. And then we just ask it model.fit, pass in the data, pass in the labels, and then use joblib to take that model and create a pickle file. It's as simple as that, right? So that gives us a trained model from the Chipotle data. The next step is how do we go from a trained model to a deployed model in a Lambda container? That's where we have this standard Docker file. You can see we're using the same public ECR image for Lambda Python. Only this time we're copying in deployment slash app.py, requirements.txt and chipotle.pickle. So this is trained model, Python requirements and the logic which is essentially our Lambda handler. We install our requirements and then this last command tells the container what the Lambda handler is. And in this case, it's a function called Lambda handler inside app.py. So let's just look inside app.py. This should look familiar to anyone who's deployed a Python Lambda before. It takes in event and context. It loads in our model using joblib. You can see there's the chipotle.pickle file that we just copied into the container. We pull latitude and longitude off the query string the same way you would with any other Lambda function. We do model.predict, passing in the latitude and longitude, and then we just return a string of the prediction in the body. So from here, this file is a standard Lambda function. If you didn't want to do machine learning with Lambda, you could strip out the bit of this. You could just strip out line four, and this could deploy without anything to do with machine learning. So it's, it's pretty simple in that sense. And that's pretty much it for building the Lambda image, you just need to make sure you have a Docker file and you have your app.py. The thing I should have mentioned for training the model to automate that whole process, I included this shell script. So if you want to train it yourself, you can just CD into the model folder and run dot forward slash train model dot sh. And what it does is it builds the Docker container using the training Docker file and tags it as Chipotle. Then it queries Docker for an image tagged as Chipotle. The reason why we do this is because the image that is created in that build actually has a random ID assigned to it. So the only way, the easiest way to get the ID was to do this. Then we run that image in the background with the dash D command. We give it a name of training and then we pass in app.handler as the Lambda handler because in this case, it doesn't matter. We don't actually have, this isn't gonna run in Lambda. We're just running this to get a file out of it. So then we do CP, the Chipotle pickle from the container. So we're taking that file out of the container and moving it onto our file system, the host file system. Finally, we stop the Docker container and we delete it. 
and that cleans up after itself. So that's everything to do with training and building a model. If we now move into stage three, which was deploying this onto AWS, the CDK code looks very similar to any CDK code you've seen in the past. Inside lib slash the predictive lambda stack, you can see that we have this predictive lambda which instead of lambda.function, it's lambda.docker-image function. And then inside there, the code is going lambda.docker-image-code.from-image-asset. And the path is just pointed at that model folder and it automatically picks up the Docker file and kicks off that whole process. So that's a really handy feature of CDK built in from day one. It uses this to upload that Docker container to ECR that will then be used later by Lambda in the deploy. Next, I've set four gigabyte as the memory size for this, just to show you can, see if it makes any difference. I haven't power tuned this yet to see what the fastest is, but you can go up to 10 gig now, so it's definitely worth experimenting with. I then set the timeout as 15 seconds, because three was too short for the cold start. Afterwards, our API is just a standard HTTP API, the same as what you'd see in any of the other patterns and our handler points at the predictive lambda, and then we just output the URL. So that's it. That's all the CDK code we need. You can see that this deployed, so I can open this URL, and that takes a few seconds because, as I mentioned in the theory, the cold start on this, the one that I put in the presentation was about three, four seconds. I have seen this take up to 10 seconds, so there's quite a large degree of variance in the cold start for this. But after the cold start, you can see that it's actually instant for predictions. So that is pretty much everything in terms of the code. Hopefully you understand it a bit better now what you can do with Lambda and containers. If you want to try it for yourself, remember you can use the CDKP command, bring it down, make sure you have Docker running, and then you can just do npm run deploy. Okay, thanks everybody.